Okay, hello robot builders. Uh, my name is Brad Miller from Worcester Polytechnic Institute and with me is... Alex Henning. Also from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, a sophomore here in robotics engineering. And what we want to do today is show you a bunch of the new tools and things that are available for the 2013 season for building uh, C++ or Java programs for your robot. And what we've done is we have uh, intel on what the game is this year. Uh, we understand that it's taking cylindrical objects and stacking them on rectangular objects. And so we uh, spared no expense in having our team prepare a CAD model of a robot that could play that game. And you can see it here right in front of you. And what this model has on it is a bunch of uh, mechanisms or subsystems. And those subsystems, let's see, looking at this, we have we have a, a gripper that's holding our cylindrical object over there. And then at the other end of the gripper is a wrist, so it can change its angle and kind of move up and down. And that whole thing is connected to an elevator where the whole thing can be raised up and down so that we can pick up the stuff off the floor and put it onto the rectangular object. And our robot has a drivetrain with uh, motor speed controllers on the left side and on the right side. So that's our robot. And what we want to do is map this into a program. And to make that really easy for this year, we have a new tool called... Robot Builder. And what does Robot Builder do? It lets you graphically design the robot program, and then it will generate a template that you can then fill in with the specific details. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So if we look at Robot Builder, here it is, and we're letting us make a new project, and we'll call it GearsBot. Uh, and our team number is 190, so you fill that in, and then you say create a project. And now if we look at Robot Builder, there's a bunch of different panes. On the left-hand side, you can see a palette of all the components that you might drag into your robot program to create it. It's got all the sensors and speed controllers and OI uh, things like, like joysticks and joystick buttons. And then there's the middle pane, which is the robot that's being constructed called GearsBot. And then on the right-hand side, there's a properties area that lets you see the properties of anything that you're currently looking at and some help to tell you what to do. So let's get started here. Uh, remember, a robot had four subsystems, and there's a section under GearsBot called subsystems. So what we can do is just drag subsystems from the palette and put them in there. So what subsystem are you making now? So the first one we'll make is the drivetrain. So drag in a subsystem and name it drivetrain. And now what? Now we're going to do the elevator. So that's a PID subsystem. So what that's for is a subsystem which has feedback built in, where you want to be able to move to fixed position. So for instance, our elevator wants to be able to move to the floor level to pick up a cylindrical object and then move up to the top of the rectangular object so you can place it. And so that has, uh, well, we'll talk more about what's in a PID subsystem in a minute, but it basically it's one that gives you feedback. And now we'll drag in another PID subsystem, and this is for the wrist, because that also has feedback. It has a potentiometer to tell the wrist angle. And then the last one uh, that we had was called the claw. the claw, and this is that gripper that we talked about. All right, so now we have our four subsystems defined under subsystems in the robot builder. And now what we can do is take the components off the palette and add them to the subsystem. So this is the sensors and the actuators. So which one are we doing first? Let's do the claw, nice and simple. So the claw has a Victor speed controller to drive the motor on it. So we'll drag one of those in and call it motor. And then we can fill in the port here, the, the PWM channel that that motor is connected to. Now, we happen to think we want to connect it to channel 5 um, as we're building this robot. But, you know, it's, it's really not built yet. All we have is this sketch that was made, the little model. And, uh, and right now, actually, it turns out that the uh, team members are off building it. So in a couple of minutes, I think we'll have, uh, they may be done building it. They're pretty fast. Um, what's the next uh, uh, subsystem? Let's just go up and do the wrist. So we'll do the wrist. Now yeah. notice now, uh, Alex is using the Ninja high speed method of adding components to a subsystem, which is just to right click on it and then choose them out of the menu instead of having to move your wrist that extra few inches to the palette to grab the components. Okay, now we're adding a sensor a potentiometer to it. And we'll call it pot and add its analog channel. That's channel two. And now the elevator. What's that red stuff? What was all the red that was going on there? Oh, so the red stuff basically was saying it wasn't complete yet. 
So it still needs a, a, an input and an output. Well, now it just needs an input. So it's red because it doesn't have an input. It doesn't have a potentiometer or any of the other sensors to use as an input yet. And then when we go and add one in a second, it will just automatically select it. So. So let's call this pot for poten yeah. short for potentiometer and give it the channel. Yeah. So it automatically. Oh, is that channel one? No. Oh, we have to give that a channel. Yes. Now, as it turns out, um, the robot builder will automatically uh, assign channels sequentially. So if you don't have a robot yet and nobody's out ready to wire it, you can just you can just let the robot builder assign channels, and then and then later on you can uh, then just wire the robot the way the robot builder assigned the channels for you. Incidentally, another thing that you might have noticed is we're doing this stuff without actually having the robot. All we have is a little picture of what we think the robot should look like. You don't have to wait till you have a robot to start programming it like we're doing. So, uh oh, we're looking at the drivetrain now, and the drivetrain uses a special component uh, that makes it much easier to do drivetrains called a robot drive. So we'll get a robot drive, it's a controller, and we'll do robot drive two because there's two speed controllers, and we'll just call that robot drive, and again, it's got like some red areas for the left and right motors, so we have to add a couple of speed controllers, and uh, we'll call those like right motor and left motor, and um, those are those are Jaguars. So by default, it sets things to be Victors, but then you can just select from the list and then choose Jaguar. And now, if you look at Robot Drive, um, it just assigned them both to the right channel. So we'll the right motor. So we'll just make one of them be the left one, and then all the red should go away. There we go. So that's that's much better. And and so I think we're kind of set now. We have. We have this, the, all the subsystems defined on this robot with all of their sensors and motors. That only took a couple of minutes. And now, I think, they're, they're knocking at the door here, I think I can hear these guys are coming over and they want to wire the robot and they want to know what ports to use. So I guess what we could do is just go through each of the subsystems and look at them and see what port numbers we've assigned everything to. But, you know, this is a computer and it's supposed to help you make your work easier. So let's just go fill in a wiring file. So we'll just select that and pick a place to put it, maybe on the desktop over here so it's easy to find, and save that. And now, if we press the in the toolbar, if we press the wiring table button, what you can see is it pops up in a, in a web browser a wiring file. So you can now see a wiring table. So you can see uh, all of the PWMs on Digital Sidecar 1 and the analog module, and you can see what's connected to what. And you, now we'll just, we'll just print this. And then we'll hand this to those guys, and they can go off and start wiring. And when they're done wiring, what we're going to do is we'll come back and we'll get this thing going. So that's it for now. Well, we should save it first. Oh, we should save this. Oh, good point.